Good evening, folk. Welcome to Map Talk number 46. I know we're in for an exciting evening tonight. We've got Glenn McQuirk, the founder of Map for Life, talking to us again and continuing with the series he started last week. But just a little bit about Glenn. Glenn qualified as a professional civil engineer. And if you read this week's Map Gen, you would realize that at one stage he was actually known as a sewage engineer. Of, of East London, and he spoke about how we talk about what do you do and how he was often embarrassed by that sort of question. Uh, but he's the author of 30 books, uh, and he's still an engineer, but he's moved from being a civil engineer to being a life engineer. And he inspires and equips people around the world to step out of their comfort zone and into a life of, of purpose and passion. And tonight, it's just a case of Simon Sinek wrote a book entitled Start With Why, and it's how great leaders inspire action. And tonight, Glenn's going to continue on his series, and he's going to tell us how to find your why. <laughs> Well, good evening, and this is a really exciting uh, session every Wednesday, and we would love you to join us and be part of our live audience. So take a note, every Wednesday evening, join Map for Life and the Map Show. Peter, thank you so much for that smelly introduction. <laughs> I was thinking about the uh, thinking back to those days as a, an engineer and uh, working with the sewage environment. And um, it just, you know, for some people, uh, it, it's difficult to imagine that there are those people who, when they flush the toilet, <laughs> there are those others that are suddenly in business. And uh, that was part of my life for a while. And you can uh, possibly realize why I got to thinking about the fact and asking the question, surely there's more to life than this. Um, but there's so much more to being an engineer than perhaps uh, that uh, concept of being a sewage engineer. But you know something, I learned a lot, and uh, one of the important things was I began to ask important questions. And last week we started with the first part of a series called Finding Your Why. And tonight I want to continue. If you haven't, uh, if you weren't part of last week's uh, audience, or you weren't watching the, the recording of the session, I'd encourage you to go and watch that so that you can pick up from last week and, and go straight into this one. The one thing that I've realized is that when it comes to seeking your purpose, for many people, it is invisible, yet it is in plain sight. <laughs> I think of uh, that seed that, uh, you know, a seed is thinking about building a tree, for example. You know, it thinks my mandate is to build a tree just like my father or mother, the way I, I come from. And as it thinks about building this tree and it looks out into the future, it cannot see any of the resources because everything that it needs appears to be invisible. And it may think to itself, uh, there's a complete lack of resource. I could never, ever build the tree that I imagine I could be or could become. But, you know, when that seed 
buries itself in dirt, when that seed goes into a foreign environment, when that seed finds itself all alone in a dark place under pressure and experiencing things that it's never experienced before, it's in that environment that suddenly the seed dies and the DNA that was always within it is revealed and it begins to extract from nothing all of the carbon that it needs to build the tree. Because you see, the carbon dioxide was initially invisible to the seed. But when it releases its inner DNA, that which is invisible becomes the very resource that it needed. And I think when it comes to purpose, <laughs> when we look out into the future, you know, we're so concerned about ourselves, me, myself, and I, that when we look into the future or when we look around us, we cannot see the carbon dioxide that the seed doesn't see. But the, when I, let me just clarify what I'm saying. The carb, the seed is completely surrounded with the resource that is necessary to build the tree. But it cannot see it when it thinks only about itself. And in the same way, you and I, when we are looking for purpose, we are so focused on ourselves that it's impossible for us to see the abundant resource that surrounds us. And so I say that purpose is invisible yet in plain sight, but it requires something that requires that you and I die to self. And when we are able to completely die to self, then suddenly the resources necessary to build that vision that we have seen begin to manifest or rather become visible to us. I think of um, the whole concept of purpose being actually a journey with no end and and why do i why do i say that i say that purpose unlike vision vision you see something that you work towards purpose i believe is eternal <laughs> it starts and never ends so when you connect with your purpose it's going to ignite things in other people that continues to live way beyond your life. And so purpose for me is, is different to vision. Purpose, once you connect with it, it takes on a life of its own and it will continue beyond your physical life. And that for me is exciting beyond measure. So journey or purpose is a journey with no end. It goes beyond your life and mine. What's interesting, I've often observed that people are good at something. Um, in fact, they are often asked to do certain tasks because the family, the people who have grown up with them, know what their gifts and talents are. <laughs> Other people seem to see what you and I are good at and what our gifts are, but it doesn't look like we would like it to look. It doesn't put us into the place where we can enjoy that glory and glamour that I talked about before. So although many people know or have an idea what your purpose is or the, 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 the space that you should be bearing yourself in, it is very difficult for many to accept that that is their purpose. One of the common things that people say or retort is, but surely there's more, you can't just have one purpose. <laughs> there must be many. And they feel like purpose, if, if, you, if, you, if, if your purpose is defined as one life purpose, that it's going to restrict you and it's going to limit you. I want to tell you that when you connect with your purpose, it opens up a door of unlimited opportunity because purpose is not what you do. It's why you do something. And so few people 
are willing to accept this idea that there is one life purpose, just like you have one set of fingerprints, one DNA, one retina scan. I mean, everything about you is unique. So I would like to argue that if you are unique in every possible way, then it's highly likely that your purpose can also be unique. Don't discount it and say it's something ordinary and, and, and of no significance. And you must accept something that's low. I want to say that purpose, irrespective of how the world might view purpose, it is incredibly significant. And so although it may seem lowly at first, begin to listen to what other people say you're good at. Accept it and move with it and see where it takes you. I hear a lot of people talking about leaving a legacy. And I think as, as we pass that, that midway mark, uh, one of our panelists, Marvin, will be able to relate, I'm sure. And of course, Heather, you know, you just get to that midway mark, just about at the age of 40. And um, suddenly you start thinking about this thing called legacy. <laughs> and you kind of begin to wonder, what are you going to leave behind? You know, are they going to erect a statue in your honor? Are they going to name a street after you? Is a sports stadium going to be called by your name? And we, we kind of imagine something along those lines. I believe that the legacy that you and I leave is something that others are going to write about. And what they write is going to be determined but what, by what you write on their heart. <laughs> so you literally write your legacy in the hearts and minds of people. And therefore, your legacy is going to be something that lives on. It's a living legacy, not something that was, but something that is and continues to be. That's the legacy that you and I will rele release when we connect and pursue our purpose with passion. We're living in a world right now that is, has its own God. And that God is money. <laughs> Everything we do in this world seems related or. I, I was just thinking the other day, I wonder how many accountants there are in, in the world today work for on behalf of the government to ensure that all the taxes necessary are collected. <laughs> I just wonder how many are there because. It is necessary to keep this kind of control. And we end up living our life as if money was the answer to everything. I think that it is far more important for us to have meaning as our motive. That we do things that are meaningful and we seek to do things that have meaning. Because when we do that, the rewards, the fulfillment that comes is going to follow that direction. What's interesting is when we chase after money, it's the most elusive thing that we can, we can uh, that we find. It sort of just keeps out of our grasp. We can never get enough of it. It seems to be something that we can spend so easily and save. It takes so long and and, and, and it, it takes a lot of time for us to be able to accumulate. But when you do things that are meaningful, there is instant reward and a memory that lasts a time. What's really good about this concept of purpose is that it is not newsworthy. Uh, if you just have to think today of all the news headlines <laughs> that you see around the world, it is definitely not an aspiration to be someone who is newsworthy. But when you connect with purpose, it is definitely, without a doubt, noteworthy. 
Because purpose always leads to transformation. Purpose always makes things better than they were before. Purpose always meets needs. It solves problems. Enables people to live in a life abundance. For those of you who are tuned in this evening, you might notice that uh, <laughs> these different concepts that I'm sharing with you are following the alphabet. So the first letters A to I were discussed in our first session. Uh, what's interesting for me is when you first catch sight of the vision that's attached to your purpose, it is overwhelming. Very often people feel that it is a possibility to pursue a purpose of the kind that leads to the vision that they have just seen. Yet it appeals to a gift that we have all been born with, and that is the ability to overcome. And so that overwhelming feeling that you have when you catch a glimpse of your vision and your purpose is something that just awakens the natural ability that you have within you to overcome whatever obstacles you may face. I want to start winding up because I see our time is, is moving on. Um, but I can be sure tonight that if passion is missing in your life, then you are not pursuing your purpose. Because purpose and passion are Siamese twins. They are instinct. Where there is a person doing something on purpose, passion is there. I'll never forget watching those documentaries uh, with Steve Irwin, the guy from Down Under, <laughs> Australia. And he used to do this, this program with animals. And uh, there was one occasion where he was talking about a dung beetle crossing the, the uh, sands in the Kalahari here in our neighboring country, Botswana. And he was lying flat on his chest on the sand, and there in front of him was crawling a dung beetle. And, and we were sitting in the lounge <laughs> on the edge of our couch, leaning forward, and, and we were right in there with Steve Irwin because he had such passion. I mean, he could get you excited about any animal on the planet. He passed away at the age of 46 doing what he was passionate about. And the world remembers that. So passion and purpose are Siamese twins. I know for sure that when you connect with purpose, quick results or if you're seeking quick results, get rich quick schemes, all these kind of things, then purpose is not going to give that to you. <laughs> but purpose is going to result in quiet, steady, deliberate progress that ultimately is going to walk you up to the finish line so that when you've finished, that which you were sent to start can begin. So purpose, in a sense, takes on a life of its own, but it requires someone like you to be dedicated, devoted, and committed to pursuing it quietly, even although you might not see the kind of results that your peers may be enjoying in the world system. And then lastly, what I want to share with you this evening is that when you connect with purpose, people are looking at that purpose from a different perspective. Even you yourself, when you start connecting with your purpose, one of the first objections that come to your mind is, but I, how can I make money doing this? You know, and, and we take our, our purpose and our passion and sometimes the closest we get to it is a hobby on the side, something we do part-time or when we have the opportunity to do it. Simply because we have rejected the idea because we cannot see how we can make money doing it. 
Your friends, some of your closest friends, even family, may look at what you're doing and say, surely you could be doing something better with your gifts and talents or your skills, that which you've learned at school or at university. <laughs> Why are you doing this? And so you may have people questioning your purpose. But one thing is for sure, when you connect with purpose, it builds within you a conviction that any form of rejection or ridicule cannot shake. And so purpose breeds conviction. I hope that what I've shared with you this evening is going to lead to a valuable discussion by the panel after this. But not only that, that it gets you to begin to think a little bit more about purpose. And maybe, just maybe, you could be missing your purpose simply because it comes dressed in a different way to what you expect. So in a moment, Peter's going to be coming back and introduce the panel to you and uh, let's support them as they share their insights with us. Good night. Glenn, that was really thought provoking. And there's so many things that I could pick up and just carry on and talk about. So I'm looking forward to discussing some of these aspects with the panel. And today we've got an international panel. We've got Heather from London and we've got Marvin from Pretoria. So it's nice to just have this international flavor. Uh, guys, what did you think of that speech? Anything that you would like to just pick up on? as a starter. I thought that the speech was really on point when it comes to chasing your passion and not worrying about money. And not chasing money, but rather chasing your passion and the money will follow. Yeah. Heather, what about you? I think what resonated with me was the fact that, that sometimes you can become overwhelmed. And, and you don't realize that you have the ability to overcome. Wonderful. I was actually, you know, as we were talking, and I, I, I was thinking about maybe starting off with the money question. And I know in, in, in my map group, and we, and we talk about we talk about money. And, um, and, and it's a case of how important, how important is money? Marvin, you... You spoke about passion far more important than money. Would you like to enlarge on that? Sure. So it's interesting that when when one focuses on money, I was reading a quote that says, if you chase money, you'll never find your passion. And um, I think that may be the truth for many people. They'd be busy finding money, making money, but never being happy. And... Um, while money is a big enabler, it's not it's not the be all and end all for 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 us. We do need money to to uh, live a comfortable life and do certain things. But the purpose that we should live for is our purpose is is us. Um, and in so doing, I've found that focusing on your on your purpose really gets you to um, attract people that want to share in that, that want to be part of that, that even um, when that passion inside of you comes out, as, as Glenn was saying, that's a thing that, that becomes catchy and that's where people would want to um, contribute to you and grow you uh, in the form of, of, of money. Heather, what is your thoughts on money? Well, you know, um, money is right up there with oxygen because you cannot, empty plates cannot feed hungry people. Yes. But money is not the motive that you're here, that you've been put on this earth. 
And when you can differentiate be between um, your your motive and your 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 passion and why you are here, you will find that, as Marvin says, if you follow your passion, the money follows anyway. But you mustn't write off money. I, I've I've known people who've just decided, well, you know, I found my purpose. I'm leaving my job. You've got five children to feed. Just hold on and take a step. So it's very important, but it's not a, not the motive for why you're here. I think that, I think that's important. Um, you know, I, I think sometimes um, we as life coaches get a little carried away, get get a little carried away, and we and we downplay the importance of money. And it is important, as you say. Uh, you can't you can't feed the starving if you don't have the money. But by the same token, we can get trapped by the money. Absolutely. I've got a question. The money, takes over, the, the money takes over and we lose and we lose out and we, we wind up maybe maybe living a, a good life instead of instead of a great life. And it, mm. how important it is to get back to and to get the meaning the meaningful side. And I have a passion. question, Peter. Yes, please. If, if, and it's a little bit of a twist. If money didn't exist, would we still chase our dreams? Yes, because we would find another way to, yeah. to exchange, to barter, to... to um, uh, we'd probably chase our dreams more. But, in my opinion... Um, but there'd, there'd be something else that we'd be using because money is just a, a tool. It's just it's just a means of, of getting something from somebody else. Yes, so we yes. would still find the means of exchange. Yes, uh, but I but I think it's I think it's just you know we have we place too much of an emphasis on money, and, and uh, we we lose out on the dreams. Uh, I've had I've had an interesting week where I've been interacting with I'm going to use the term bird people. And, and you look and you say, what a wonderful life these people have led. They've got involved in this passion and doing doing something for nature. And and I, I, I think of I, I think of folk who got so caught up in chasing in chasing the money that they just you know it's just another day and another dollar and. Uh, Oh, it's just it's just it's just wonderful to to get there and uh, uh, have, have, pur have purpose in life and, and have that passion. Uh, any other comment coming through? Glenn, had, Glenn spoke about legacy now, uh, and he spoke he spoke about you people as opposed to me. Uh, I'm getting closer to that stage where where legacy is legacy for me is. Is a is a critical thing, and uh, I I sort of talk about leaving leaving a legacy, but uh, you two are a lot younger, and I'd like to hear your thoughts on legacy. Marvin, you're the youngest. <laughs> legacy for me is linked to the people around me being my kids, and I've, yeah. I'm, I have such a focus on being that example. Um, and showing them how to live life in, in a different way, that it, it, it really impacts others. Um, and I'm hoping that the, the, the small little things that I do, so I'm part of a band at church, and um, in, in, in using my talent to, to uh, further the vision of the church, for example, in itself is, 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 is part of a legacy that I'm focusing on. And it's something that has, I've seen inspired my daughter to want to also start playing an instrument and 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 inspired her to also want to discover this music thing inside of her. Um, and I see how much of an influencer she is amongst her friends. Um, and it's kind of creating a bit of a ripple effect, which is which is fantastic. My son on the, on the other hand, uh, while he's still, he's the youngest of the two, um, he he gets excited at the uh, at the chance of trying to play an instrument. Um, I, I play piano, so every time I sit there, oh. he wants to be there, be part of it. So clearly, it it is rubbing off on him. Um, now, 
for me, it's important to focus on leaving a legacy within my immediate circle, which is my family. But beyond that, also um, in our Map Cafe, uh, to me, it's just always inspirational and, and always something exciting, something that I look forward to in, in making a difference in, in, in the young people's lives that, that, that attend that Map Cafe. Because I know that what we share there is something that they take into work and they take into their family and in their friendship circles. Because we hear the stories the week after that to hear, hey, we spoke about this gem and we spoke about that question yeah. and then that topic, that we, which, which, which is really amazing. So for me, legacy is now slowly, I'm seeing the fruits of that in my kids. I'm seeing the fruits of that in um, the, the attendees of our MAP Cafe and, and our friendship circles. Outside of MAP, there are a couple of people that I mentor as well. And it's nice to hear them echo the things that you put in. Um, I mean, that to me is just is amazing. I'm going, to, I'm going to come back to you with another question, but let's get to those views. Lisa, what, do you, what do you say about legacy? Well, first of all, I'm very flattered to be put in the same age range as Marvin. Thank you, Glenn. <laughs> must be really exceptionally good today. Um, but I liked what Glenn said about a legacy. You write your legacy on the hearts of people because yeah. for me, every person I come into contact to, I want to leave them with increase. I want yeah. to leave them in a better position, um, be it physically, mentally, spiritually, than they were in before. I don't want to leave them having doubts, fears, questions, uh, negative questions. Um, so for me, that uh, writing your legacy on the hearts of people, um, I, I, I understand that because that's what I want to do. Um, I love what Marvin says about leaving a legacy with your with your children. Um, I, I'm I'm hoping that my my daughters um, pick up all my good points because they get to see your bad points as well. So that that's what um, legacy is for me. Wonderful. Well, than you, the ultra athlete. Would you like to just talk about your ultra athlete experiences and legacy? Sure. So, I think even from a sporting perspective, I I haven't found anyone in our family that uh, has done some of the ultra distances that 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 I've attempted and have managed to succeed. And that in itself is just. For me, that was one thing that inspired me to want to do these things because no one else in our family did it. The same with getting a degree. I was the first in our family that got a degree, the first to get kind of a postgrad as well. So for me, those are little things that I'm, I'm trusting my, my kids will pick up on and um, will we'll yes. start doing. Uh, in fact, I, I took my son uh, to Cowhouse recently uh, as well as to the Ragani farm, and they they had a, a a ride. So he's riding a little 12 inch bicycle, and he finished 10 kilometers on his own. I helped him wonderful, now and then, wonderful. and it's something that he felt, wow, I can do this, Dad. Okay, along the way we stopped a couple of times because he was complaining yeah. his wrists are getting sore and his bum is getting sore, yeah. but oh, it inspired no. him to want to do it because he sees me going to do going on my training runs and training rides and he wants to do it he says come dad let's go to we've got a little shop around the corner let's go to mama's tuck shop and he wants to go and i must chase him down you know um and i saw that with my daughter she rode a bmx she did 22 kilometers off-road on a bmx if anybody knows how tough that is um you'll appreciate that 22 kilometers on a bmx with no shocks um takes some doing yeah. Um, if I look at, at, at um, just how it's inspired me in terms of actually completing Comrades, completing a couple of the Argus's, 947s, it actually inspired my wife to, to, to want to participate. So we did two or three uh, 94.7s on si separate bikes, and um, we did two Argus's on separate bikes. Uh, needless to say, it took us six and a half hours, the first one. And uh, I didn't, I did, I wasn't going to let that happen again. So I ended up getting us a tandem, so that I can control us finishing sooner. <laughs> and we did, we did every year. We did four and a half hours. 
So wonderful. We, saved, wonderful. we cut down two hours, which is a lot yes. if you're sitting on wonderful. a bike for that for that time. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I I have this thing with with my wife uh, when it comes to to running races, and we very very rarely these days run together. And it's it's simply on the on the basis of when people say to you, "Why don't you run with your husband?" She says, "I've got to sleep with him. That's enough for me." <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> and, 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 but it is it, it just it just creates that wonderful the wonderful you know the wonderful family legacy with with both of us with yeah. both of us running. I was I was looking at something on Facebook today. And it was a friend, it was a friend passing comment, and she did a 32k road race today out at the cradle. Uh, that's a very for the overseas folk, that's a very I was gonna say hilly stroke mountainous area uh, out on the west end of, of Gauteng. And she did it with her husband, and she was so proud of her 80-year-old mother-in-law. Who was there not only supporting, but the 80 year old mother in law did a 10K. And it was a case of inspiring to her son and daughter. It's just, a, just a wonderful example. Just coming back to Glenn's talk and, 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 and where, he, where he started, and he spoke about, he spoke about a journey with no end and uh, spoke about beyond our life. Uh, any comments on that? And uh, is, that, is that an important feature? And how does how does that affect affect us and our purpose and our passions? I think if you look at the opposite, if you live just for today, is life really worth living? No. If you live for more than today, and looking at building on what you're starting now so that it outlasts you, that's worth living for. No. Um, yeah. And the only way to do that is in people and, 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 and with people and through people. Um, if you try and do it alone, it's, 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 it's not going to have as, in fact, if, it's, if you do it alone, it's all about you. If you do it with people and for people, it, that's true legacy. That's true living beyond yourself because nobody knows how many days we have left, how many hours we have left. But if, if, if we have and keep on focusing with the end in mind being beyond just yourself, beyond just this week, beyond just next year, mm -hmm. beyond your lifetime, that to me is is, 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 is is something I try to live for. And I try to inspire yes. those around me to focus on. Yes. Heather, any your comments? Well, as you said, Marvin, you know, we, we have no guarantees. So um, I kind of like feel like you've got to live for today. You've got to... You've got to make the most of every opportunity that you get today because you might yes. not be able to develop on it tomorrow. Yes. So even though I'm leaving a legacy that I want to last beyond my term, it means that every moment of every day, I've got to give my best and I've got to think of how this can take the next person further. Yes. Wonderful. And, no, and you know, I, the important thing is, 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 is it, I'm sorry. For, for, for cutting you no, go, go it requires planning if you're not going to plan mm -hmm. towards that the fact that yes. you don't put it down and you don't focus it, it, it no. means it's not going to last beyond a day it's not going to last beyond next week but yeah. if you actually yeah. put your mind to it put a plan to it write the thing down write that vision down and actually work it um, and, and have people around you keep you honest keep you accountable um, and, and partner with you along the way that's what firstly keeps it alive. Secondly, it inspires others to want to build that vision and carry it um, beyond just your own lifetime. I, I think of, you know, when I did the talk about Gaudi uh, and, and how he built um, the Familia Sagrada and the fact that it's outlived him two lifetimes uh, beyond him and it's still going on without yes. him putting any money in himself. It's, it's being funded by those around, of, uh, around us that want to go and see it and want to go experience it. It's also being funded by the government. Had he not planned this thing, thought this thing through, put it down in creating that sculpture, we wouldn't we wouldn't be 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 um, wouldn't be seeing that for familiar Sagrada today. 
It's true. You know. The accountability is what's key, Marvin, because I don't know when, when I was in school and I had an exam on Thursday, Wednesday night, I learned everything. I waited because I thought I had all this time. So my main concern was just that we mustn't think that we've got all the time. The plan must be there, but make yourself accountable. Yes, I agree yes. for, for what you need to do to get there. Yes. Now, one last question. And I think it's a question, it's a question that, that sums up, and it's, and it's a question, and I'm putting you folk in, in the spot, and I'm saying, well, you map for life leaders. And it's a case of a question of your why. And the question in this week's gem, map for life gem was, Jesus came that we might have life and life abundantly. Now, why have you come? Heather, would you like to just comment on that and then Marvin? Yes, well, I believe that I've come to ignite a spark in individuals so that they're going to get want to get excited about fulfilling their dreams and then and helping them know why they are doing every task which will bring them closer to their goal you see we always talk about know your why but if you know your why in every little thing that you do it grows and it becomes the bigger why so don't get lost in trying to find out why and what's the, the purpose look at the purpose in everything you do and then you'll find the greater purpose Wonderful, thank you. And Marvin? I was reflecting on, on, on my purpose statement and I'm gonna quickly share it with you. I've come to be, be a game changer in young, young people's lives, helping them to find their authentic self and live it to the fullest. So for me, I know that it's young people that I wanna target and that I target and that I connect the best with. Um, with this life being so full of copies around and wanting to be someone else and not be themselves. I, I, I had to find that in myself and find where I would fit in so that I could inspire the young people to, to do the same. Um, and that's why for me, focusing on who you are, your true self, finding your true self and accepting it and then living in that um, to the fullest is, 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 is in itself a legacy, I think. Wonderful, thank you. You know, I, I'm very proud, proud to be a part of this wonderful Map for Life group. And I, you know, Glenn finished off and he said he was hoping that, uh, that tonight would get people to just think about their purpose. It's been so wonderful to have folk like you two setting out and telling the world why you came. So thank you to you. And folk outside there, I hope we've given you something to think about. So until next week, take care. God bless. Good night. Mm -hmm.